Delta Com. Help for those affected by the pandemic. Four thousand nine hundred twenty-six new cases have been recorded in the last twenty-four hours. Thirty-seven uh, new deaths have been recorded. That brings the total number of people who have now died from COVID-19 to forty-one thousand eight hundred and twenty-five. Sky's Katie Spencer has been looking at the data, and uh, Katie, uh, it looks like to me that's the on cases that's the highest figure for quite some time. Yeah, the highest figure in France since uh, early May, and to give you an idea, I mean, of course, that then we were testing quite similar, but to give you an idea of really the speed at which things are now moving, if you compare today's data, yesterday's data for people testing positive for COVID-19. A 558 increase in the number of people uh, testing positive. You can see things are moving incredibly quickly in, in those terms. There's a couple of other details which we mentioned tonight, which are worth uh, noting as well. In terms of testing, uh, we can see that the new data shows that 188,865 daily tests were processed within this set of data. But if you compare that to yesterday, that's 30,000 fewer than the day before. And what you've got to bear in mind as well is the fact that actually on a daily testing capacity at the moment it's staying at 263,000 so that implies the government is still really having issues in terms of getting tests uh, turned around. Um, as for the situation in uh, hospitals, the Prime Minister of course mentioned earlier today that hospital admissions are, are doubling within a week. We can again see the speed in terms of the numbers that we're seeing tonight. So the daily number of those uh, in hospital with coronavirus uh, stands at 1,319 with the data, and that's 238 more than yesterday's figure. Uh, as for the number of people on ventilator beds, that's now 138, 43 more than uh, yesterday's figure. So yes, we're seeing a significant rise now in the number of cases. We're also starting to see signs that hospital admissions and the number of people requiring ventilator beds is also starting to increase. So this uh, data is the reason why we're seeing these corporate restrictions now being introduced. Okay, Katie, thank you very much. Well, let's find out what people are making of the new coronavirus restrictions uh, around the country. Sky's Jane Secker is in Reading this evening. Jane. Hi, Mark. Yeah. Uh, the hospitality industry is the third biggest employer in the country, and lots of towns and cities like Reading have a really big nighttime economy, hundreds of bars and restaurants here. And, of course, it's Freshers' Week. It's the time when the students uh, are starting their new academic year, and first years especially. It's a, it's a really big time for socialising, and it's really, really a lot quieter than it ever would be this year. Uh, earlier, I spoke to the manager of the Purple Turtle, which is something of an institution in Reading and asked him about how he thought his business was going to cope. It's one of the late night bars here in Reading where people traditionally go after the pub's shut. He's now got to close at 10 o'clock. We're all very nervous, very, very, very nervous in the industry um, and we're going to need some serious help from the Chancellor to continue to but not, not make too many redundancies. We're going to have to do a lot of head scratching, uh, a lot of planning on where the business can move to of these new restrictions. We don't want to put anyone else you know, out of work, but the, the furlough scheme is there until at the end of October. We may have to rely on that again. Uh, I can't promise anybody anything right now, but uh, within the next few days, we will get together. We will find a plan and uh, uh, we won't be beaten by it. Well, uh, that's what he, he certainly hopes, uh, and he hopes that positivity will be perhaps mirrored by the people who are coming uh, to his pubs and bars. Well, in Scotland, the First Minister has gone even further than Boris Johnson. Uh, she's imposed a ban on households mixing together. Uh, Dan Whitehead is in Edinburgh and sent us this update. A significant deviation from the Prime Minister's announcement in the House of Commons. The big headline here in Scotland is, is this change to uh, social meet. So from tomorrow in Scotland, households cannot meet up in other private households indoors. So that is a really significant uh, move uh, and clearly one which signifies that the medical officer in Scotland is not happy and doesn't think uh, that... UK's plans applying to England go far enough, so that will 
see a lot of families right across Scotland now having serious conversations about whether they not need to re create new bubbles and move into each other's homes. So that is ongoing at the minute. A significant raft of measures announced by the First Minister on top of uh, that, mirroring, mirroring what was announced in England. The other one, uh, seeing the hospitality sector, cafes, pubs, restaurants having to close their doors uh, at 10 o'clock. Um, a £500 support package for those self-isolating on low incomes. That was announced in England uh, as well the other day. So the other policy is very much uh, mirroring what we've already seen in England. But Nicola Sturgeon going much further when it comes to restrictions uh, on uh, meeting up in households. And that will be banned from tomorrow. People can still meet up in public spaces, just not indoors in other people's uh, houses. There are some exceptions when it comes to social bubbles. Quickly to mention as well about how long this is going to go on for. We heard that time frame from Boris Johnson, six months. Nicholas Sturgeon says there will be a review in three weeks in hopes that some of these restrictions can be eased sooner. It is certainly the case that until scientific developments such as a vaccine change the game in the battle against COVID, it will have a continuing impact on our lives. But that doesn't necessarily mean that all of the...